Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for October 21st. October 21st is the 294th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 295th in leap years, with 71 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is perihelion. Perihelion is a noun used in astronomy that means the point in the orbit of a planet, asteroid, or comet at which it is closest to the sun. I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others and let me know your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, you can see others like it in the This Day in History playlist linked in the show notes. And if you're on YouTube, you can also find it in the iCards up in the corner there. And with that, we're going to start in the year 1512 when Martin Luther joined the theological faculty of the University of Wittenberg on October 21st, 1512. Ferdinand Magellan discovered a strait on October 21st, 1520. We now know that strait as the Strait of Magellan. This is the birthday of English poet, philosopher, and critic Samuel Taylor Coleridge, born October 21st, 1772. His works include The Rime of the Ancient Mariner and Kublai Khan, among others. There are more. He lived to the age of 61. 44-gun United States Navy frigate USS Constitution was launched on October 21st, 1797. Portland cement was patented on October 21st, 1824. Portland cement is the most common type of cement in general use around the world as a basic ingredient of concrete, mortar, stucco, and non-specialty grout. I didn't know that before. While it was named by Joseph Aspden, who obtained the patent, his son, William Aspden, is regarded as the inventor of modern Portland cement because of his further development of it. The low cost and widespread availability of the limestone shales and other naturally occurring materials used in Portland cement make it one of the lowest cost and versatile construction materials used over the last century. This is the birthday of Swedish chemist and engineer Alfred Nobel, born October 21st, 1833. As you might know, he invented dynamite and founded the Nobel Prize. He lived to the age of 63. On October 21, 1854, Florence Nightingale and a staff of 38 nurses were sent overseas to the Crimean War, where she managed and trained nurses and organized care for wounded soldiers. Thomas Edison applied for a patent for his design of the incandescent light bulb on October 21, 1879. Lighten them up here, boss. <laughs> Opening ceremonies for the World's Columbian Exposition were held in Chicago on October 21st, 1892, although the exposition didn't open until May 1st of 1893 because of construction delays. On October 21st, 1921, President Warren G. Harding delivered the first speech by a sitting U.S. President against lynching in the Deep South. This is the birthday of author and literary critic Ursula Le Guin, born October 21, 1929. Perhaps best known as a science fiction and fantasy author, she was a prolific author, having written more than 20 novels, more than 100 short stories, as well as poems and children's books. I particularly like her book, No Time to Spare, Thinking About What Matters. There's a link in the show notes for several of her titles if you're interested. Ursula Le Guin lived to the age of 88. This is the birthday of musician and producer Manfred Mann, born October 21st, 1940. I placed a link to his 1976 cover of Bruce Springsteen's Blinded by the Light in the show notes for you. 
And I gotta say, it's hard to imagine that someone I grew up listening to is turning 80 in 2020. But there you go, Manfred Mann. The first edition of Ernest Hemingway's novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls, was published on October 21st, 1940. This is the birthday of guitarist and songwriter Elvin Bishop, born October 21st, 1942. An original member of the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of that group in 2015 and the Blues Hall of Fame in his own right in 2016. Still alive, he turned 78 in 2020. French women voted for the first time on October 21st, 1945 during the 1945 French legislative election. This is the birthday of actress Carrie Fisher, born October 21st, 1956. Child of a showbiz family, she joined the family business and earned her stardom. She sure did. She'd been in many movies and TV shows. Of course, when I think of Carrie Fisher, I always think of Princess Leia from Star Wars. Sadly, she passed away at the age of 60. A comet known as Comet Ikea Seiki, or the Great Comet of 1965, approached perihelion on October 21st, 1965, passing 279,617 miles, or 450,000 kilometers from the sun. On October 21st, 1966, an event known as the Aberfan disaster took place in Wales. This was related to coal mining. Historically, as they would dig the coal out, they would pile the waste material, stack the waste material up in a pile. They would call that a spoil tip. You know, it's basically a pile of loose dirt called the spoil tip and there were several of them in the area. This was the standard operating procedure. The spoil tip that slipped into the village on that day had been started some eight years earlier. In this case, the spoil tip was piled on a mountain just outside the village. There'd been a good bit of rain, as I understand it, and sort of happened maybe similar to the way that if you've got a big pile of sand and it gets rained on, it's gonna wash down, except that that was on a mountain, so the down that it washed was into the village. When it came down, it came down like a landslide, fast, hard, and thick, smashing into buildings and burying people. 144 people lost their lives on that day. Most of them were school-aged children who were in the school that happened to be in the path of the slide. On October 21, 1969, a Somali coup d'etat established a Marxist-Leninist administration. Images of a dwarf planet were taken on October 21, 2003. A couple years later, they were analyzed and used to document the discovery of this planet. <laughs> Today, we know that dwarf planet as Eris. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. I always do. As always, links to my research are in the show notes, as is my playlist for this day in history in the show notes on YouTube. It will also be in the iCards. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. You can do that with a link in your email messaging or social media. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Sometimes people walk down the street. I can see about this much. <laughs> road noise. Can you hear that road noise? I'm about a mile and a half or two miles from an interstate highway. Okay, let's see if we could just get that all the way through. Wouldn't that be awesome? That sounds like a pretty ambitious project. Okay, just leave that part out.
not the first day, but the birthday. I guess the birthday is the first day. This is what happens when you don't clean up your script. <laughs> I might leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all well that's gonna go together. Or if it's even gonna make it to the video, we'll just see. That's not gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna cut those out. And that'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> That might not make it into the video, we'll see. Changing it up.